hello. I've been waiting for the neighbor's dog to stop barking and just jump online and see who's here to discuss some really interesting things. This may be a long one. I have uh, quite a lot of things floating through my head this lazy Sunday morning and I thought that if you're interested in just discussing some things or popping into the chat some questions and let me know. Today's theme, and I really want to just take my time, I re-listened to my last video and I realized that sometimes I just don't even breathe when I'm in flow state. Good morning, Zan. Good morning, Mel. Thank you so much for being here. Thought I'd have my coffee with you and just discuss some really deep things. Um, I just, even if no one's listening, I feel compelled to speak these things because the cables of the internet are under the ocean beds and the frequency of what I'm speaking about is literally changing the state of consciousness for the bodies of water. The bodies of water hold what we speak. The atmosphere holds what we speak. The firmament holds what we speak. The ice holds what we speak. It is water that holds memory. So they're very thick topics today. I want to speak about the black box, which is why black rock hold the economy and everything you buy is funnel, uh, buy, buy and sell is funneling money back to black rock. But I also want to talk about eugenics. Now, eugenics became very popular, particularly after the Second World War. I just want to break it down really basically that what you observe and what you witness changes who you are. It changes your consciousness. It changes how you think and it changes the DNA. Now, we've been set and programmed. It's literally MKR programming into a very masculine cube pattern. It's going to go deep today. So please see if you can track with me. Um, these are things that spirits just witnessing to me this morning, channeling in. Know this too. I'm not educated. I'm not knowledgeable on any of this. I'm simply listening. And that's how you know that it's mystical connection. Now, where did it all begin? probably at the reset of Mount Hermon. I do believe there were there were um, humans that were on Earth long before the 6,000 years of creation that are mentioned in the current Christian scriptures because of this. There was an agreement made on Mount Hermon and Mount Hermon has a real history. It's really interesting and I've learned this from the Book of Enoch. But when you dive into Saturnalia and the worship of the black cube, you'll see that this is literal history repeating itself. The giants were huge and now they're smaller, but it's the same DNA, the same bloodlines, the same symbols used. It is the same verbiage, the same words. The Gregory, the Gregory. We have the Gregorian calendar, which was changed from the original calendar. Now, I wanted to start with this particular um, verses in Acts chapter seven, and the Bible becomes very alive when you start to see it as a magical book, when you start to see it as an esoteric book, which means inside, instead of external. Remember that Masonics, the M is there for matter. They look externally. They're making everything external, over and above, internal. And where does the M sit on the apron? That's right, right over the dicky bird, right over the phallic symbol that comes from ancient Egyptian times, maybe even earlier. Um, these esoteric things have been stolen by these men to put you into a box, supernaturally speaking. So Acts 7 says this, let's find the verse and I'm really gonna take my time so that you can jot some comments or digest this at your own pace. I confess that I go like a bat out of hell 
I was born in the year of the fire horse and the horse runs fast, it gallops, right? So please stay with me here. Now, this is in the uh, speaking to the error of Moses to the Jews. Now, the Jews and the Jewish are not the same people, but I do believe that the principles and also the entities have been passed along and I'll try to get to how I've landed with this so the Jews right were exiting Egypt and with them they took Egyptian esoteric knowledge and they understood things like magic and they were not wanting to tap into the creator that set them free from these black magic spells they wanted to keep looking back to the old ways this is where we get eugenically trapped into what we perceive what we witness as our environment as our culture uh, things that we're seeing our soul is connecting what we see we become we internalize right that's how mkr programming works you flash the light and the sound and sound manipulates the dna so whatever we're hearing while the light's flashing Whatever we're hearing, we become that. So it's, as soon as our identity is latched into culture, religion, uh, rituals, or a city that we live in, a postcode, um, visuals that we're seeing, if that becomes part of our identity instead of our identity being connected to soul level, connected to um, holy creator uh, as a light being, we become what we witness now i gave you that little chat the other day about the three witnesses being the water the blood and the spirit the three are one that's the actual trinity not what you've been taught in your churches those of you that have like me jumped out of christianity so acts chapter 7 this is really interesting so saying unto aaron this is the real jews yeah they were not the jew ish the ish gives it away right so we're going to get to that it's going to be a long chat today i'm hoping that the internet keeps up with me i'm hoping that there's no glitches so i'm just putting my intentions of protection shielding and the calling in to anyone that needs to hear this or even a section of this so the jews said to aaron make us gods to go before us make us gods they're, they're very understanding of the esoteric concept that they can create as gods themselves they can create something to worship but if you had god in you why would you need to create something to bow down to it doesn't make sense right but this was their culture this was their habit they were used to bowing down to the egyptian entities the egyptian bloodlines and this gets really interesting because it all goes back to saturn and and so this is as Moses climbed the mountain, right? We say Mount Sinai, but it's I'm wondering if it's all the same mountain because I've tracked this in the ancient holy books. There seems to be two sides to the mountain, which makes sense. Two different names to the mountain, just as you have two different sides to the mind. The esoteric solution to looking to that is the moon side and the sun side or the subconscious mind which becomes a super consciousness and the body's programming, right? We The body's directly linked into the subconscious mind and the right side of the brain, the, co the feminine side, the co-creational side. So why would a bunch of men want to box us in and out of our circle, yeah, out of our co-creational mind that links into spirit? Wisdom's written about as a she in the books of Solomon. So back to the Jews or the Israelites, Is, Isis, Ra, El. <laughs> Israel I want you to just chew on that just for a minute I want to show you from my perspective just my perspective that I don't believe that Israel the current one is actually the holy land at all I think it's more inclined to be a battle about this ancient mount and I'll show you why so they're exiting Egypt and they want uh, Aaron to Aaron is their 
Levitical priest. Now, the word Levite is one of the tribes, but it also to me links straight into Leviathan, which is this dragon that God created, this entity that was there to rule for duality. Now, Leviathan's a really interesting dragon. It's mirrored in Revelation with seven heads. We've got seven systems. We also have seven energy points or gates, as I prefer to call them, portals. So they come to Aaron, their priest, because they didn't have direct contact with Creator. They were too low vibrational and they asked him to make them a calf. They wanted to have their orgies, bow down, have their parties, the lifestyle that they were used to having in Egypt. We know that any of the elites had these types of things. You can watch any single movie on Netflix and watch anyone that was ruling has these harems, has these orgies, has abundance of food. The seven deadly sins, I suppose. And I don't even like the word sin. I see this, the word sin now as missing the mark, hence the word Sinai. Because in sigils, a Sinai wave, S-I-N-E, means the dip in the wave. It's the low density energy, right? So, and God says in verse 42, uh, and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. So God allowed the Israelites, because of their desires and their co-creational ability, to give up their desires to worship the hosts of heavens. Well, I just want to present to you today is that the seven planetaries, the watchers or the Gregory, I believe it's so because these, these deities placed in the heavenlies are God's clock. They are meant to watch over us. But when you get to the story of Mount Hermon from Enoch, it gets really juicy and interesting. Now, I would just like to remind you that we are in a year of Saturn. We are in a karmic year. How do I know this? Because we add up the numerology 20, 24, right? So we've got two plus two plus four equals eight. Now, when we're talking about spiritual cycles of Saturn, this is why the Jews worshipped God on the seventh day. They were meant to rest and stop striving for material things and matter and lean into their creator and worship the one that made them, not the things that he made or he, she made, because there's no sex upstairs, right? So let's just don't worry about these pronouns when we're talking about the divine. We've gotten too caught up in that in religiosity, I believe. Definitely God's wisdom is feminine energy. It is the, and you cannot have a God's mindset without this divine feminine. So let's for now just forget the pronouns and call it spirit, right? God is spirit. God lives and flows through all of us. What happens though when you pop energy into a cube or a, when I do house clearings, I go to the corners of the house and the room intentionally because energy gets trapped in a corner. Energy gets trapped in the corners. Now, ancient buildings may be built by the Gregory, the watchers, or maybe built by ancients, who knows at this stage, these Tartarian buildings you will notice all had domes. Even look at the dome in Israel. Have a look. It's a feminine. It's a feminine shape. And so the energy spirals around and they usually have a spire on top. Now, the spire either draws the energy up and out or it draws it down, depending on what you're invoking. Now, I use the word invoking. It sounds rather witchy, right? But to invoke means what are you meditating on? What are you pulling in? And is my desire to connect with the divine and take the energy in from a higher state? Or am I invoking planetaries? Am I invoking the essence of watcher energy that come from created things? And this is the old conversation of whether or not we should call and I don't get caught up too much in the verbiage. I flip flop about now because spirits show me to meet people where they're at. 
as to whether or not we call God the universe or whether the universe is also part of the creation or whether it's all encompassing energy that flows and connects with spirit. I believe that God is big enough to meet you exactly where you're at. And so these words don't really matter until the consciousness drops in to your heart and you know exactly that you feel peaceful in your transformation and your connection in the way that you chat with the divine. So these ancient Israelites were given up to worship the hosts of heaven as written in the book of the prophets. Uh, it says that they've offered and slain beasts. So they were doing sacrifice by the space of 40 years in the wilderness. Yet they took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of the god Remphain, R-E-M-P-H-A-N. Uh, which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Babylon, confusion. Now, this is the esoteric story, but guess what? There's an, uh, this is the exoteric story or the exit of Egypt, but there's also an esoteric story where you personally must exit the stories that have been taught to you by your culture and by those ruling you. Now, please have a little look now at what the Tabernacle of Moloch stands for. I'm not going to spell it out graphically here because it's rather barbaric and awful. It does link into child sacrifice. But I want you to see what the star of Remphain looks like. And then you might start to understand how the heart is a space of duality. The ancient symbol for heart is exactly the same as the star of Remphain, also happens to be the star that's on the flag for Israel, Isis, Ra, and other Elohim. Right? Now, currently ruled by the Jewish, the Jewish have taken up the doctrines of the ancient Israelites and the Canaanites and implemented them and made them a religion. Now today's chat's going to be thick, so ride with me if you dare. All right, so I want to start back at Enoch, the book of Enoch, chatting about um, how God will tread upon earth even on Mount Sinai. But then we get to Mount Hermon, and we had 200 supposedly archangel beings called watchers come down on Mount Hermon and make a covenant to take the women and teach them all sorts of magical tricks. Now, these magical tricks are definitely still in action, but I want to uh, explain to you the duality that I have picked up with Spirit's guidance in this in don't get afraid about the ancients having this knowledge. Tap in as the bride of Christ and take all the knowledge back for yourself. Because these things were taken from, it says in the book of Enoch, from higher heaven. Which is, if we're loving, we're gone to heaven in a higher state of consciousness. If I am using esoteric knowledge for the better good of humanity, this is love and light. This is a gift for the bride of Christ. This is when the hemi-sinkings happened and you are looking to do this with balance, with dignity, with authority. Um, so these things that the watchers, I believe, prematurely taught a density of humans that had a lot of knowledge but not much wisdom, they were then tempted to use this for darkness and the eugenics kicked in. Now, a lot of people might say, how would a watcher take a woman as a wife? How would they have offspring? If we understand about DNA and the splicing and cloning now and eugenics as a major scientific thing, I'm just going to propose today that maybe it wasn't even sexual. It was the jealousy of the beauty and the and the wisdom that these women had. Remember, the wisdom, um, wisdom is feminine at a heavenly state that these angels that were 
masculine or they were, were you know we have these councils of men in heavenly state these 200 archangels are all said to be men they came to the highest point uh to take the women because remember we co-create in god's state from the feminine side of the brain good morning bobby and everyone else that's just logged in great to have you here so were they wanting this feminine ability to not just co-create with the right side of the brain but to procreate using the belly i'm hazarding a guess that that's exactly what it is so i'm going to scroll down um and just chat into briefly i want you to go read these books of enoch this is in enoch book chapter one uh now i'm re uh, book one i mean and i'm reading now from where is it chapter six so chapter six is a really short chapter and it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied in those days they were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters and the angels and the children of heaven saw and lusted after them and said to one one another come let us choose us wives from among the children of men and beget us children and Semjaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered him and said, Let us swear an oath and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. They swore them all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it, and they were all in 200 who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. They are, and these are the names of their leaders. Samlazas, their leader. Akalba, Ramil, Kokablel, Tamlel, Ramlel. Danel, Ezekiel, Barikijal, Asael, Armaros, Batarel, Ananel, Zakiel, Samsapel, Satarel, Turel, Jomjael, Sariel. These are the chiefs of tens. There are always armies, there are leaders, and then um, subjects under them so not every demonic entity has the same rank in the heavenly state but these leaders would have been the main watchers now i find it fascinating that most christians aren't aware that um, where christ was baptized was right at the base of mount hermon so he was shifting the frequency in the going under or dying to self right there and connecting with the symbol of the dove which is mother wisdom into a conduit into the body remember the body is a battery it holds positive and negative energy and it's the energy of the human body that changes the frequency of water water holds consciousness water holds memory so this particular spot uh, the Jordan River and look at where we're talking about regionally where we've got so much chaos happening now guys the dipping under and the reviving to connect again with mother spirit it's taught that that's Holy Spirit but I believe the symbol of dove what um, creator has shown me is more likely inclined to be connecting with mother wisdom and the feminine the divine feminine so coming into the body of christ and rebalancing the cathodes rebalancing the battery state uh, shifting the poles if you like so going from negative to positive now many scholars say that also mount herman was the place for ascension now isn't that incredible that i've mentioned this before christ took three a trinity of lower density up onto the top of herman waiting to ascend 
in crystalline body um, but who met him there just want to double check this before I go into flow state and have something that I wasn't ready to be prepared to speak about but typing in who met Christ on the Mount of Ascension who appeared with Christ for the Mount of Ascension Thank you for being here. Yeah, it was Moses and Elijah came in spirit state. Both of these beings said to not be traversing in three dimensional reality. But Moses, the symbol for death, yeah, had to die. He couldn't uh, work with his anger. Yeah, he had was given two tablets. This is really interesting when you study Moses, not using the word Moses, but using ancient words. I challenge you to dive into this. But he was given crystalline sapphire tablets, which would have said, love, 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 forgive, forgive, forgive. And he got angry with the Israelites, Isis, Ra, and other Elohim, and smashed it on the ground. And then he... Um, was given a second set of tablet, tablets in stone. Now stone is the carbon density. We're living in a stone vessel. We're living in carbon. Yeah, humans, the whole 666 dilemma Uh, six neutrons, six protons, and six electrons. The WWW in Jewish, yeah? The 666W trans, uh, translates in Jew, Jewish language to using geometria into six. The uh, reason um, the Jewish language, or it's, it's not a niche, the Jews language was powerful is because it's a co-creational frequency language using numerology. So don't be afraid of the 666. The body is actually the animal state. It's the animal suit where the spirit's living, having this experience. So we've got Mount Hermon externally, representing the space where the covenant was made for the watchers or the planetaries that were meant to be our guardians to make an agreement with other fallen angels to take the women i believe it wasn't sexually i'm sure they use sex in their worshiping acts but if we're looking at the size of a gregory a size of an angel and the size of um the the offspring of these women which were called giants and nephilim the children were enormous so how could a small woman give birth to a giant maybe it's possible but i feel they were using splicing and cloning this was one of the things that the giants taught or the giants were taught these bloodlines were taught from the fallen angels I want to just quickly find in this same book Enoch chapter 1 uh, and read to you some of the things that they taught their brides now I want you to think about this as brides so if you were jealous of a real creator and you wanted to be a god or you wanted to be worshipped you would have a bride right because this is the feminine aspect of the masculine of the godhead so I believe this is what they were emulating this is what they were teaching the esoterical things that were reserved for the bride of christ at the end of times after the book of revelation after the veil is lifted you know the veil is symbology of the bride right we lift the bride and we can see we can hear we have esoteric downloads we've literally got our supernatural giftings back uh, thanks bobby come back and watch the replay for the end of it i wish you well i know it's late there in usa so these are the things that the watchers 
taught the women, the Jews, the real Jews in their time. Now these, as Putin's showing us, these are not the Jewish, these are not the uh, white skin generations. These are the ancient generations. Yeah, we all birthed out of one place uh, epigenetically, genetically. Our DNA all came from one place. And this is what they were taught. Uh, they were taught, they took unto themselves, this is chapter 7 and 8 that I'm going to go through now, I think. Uh, they took unto themselves wives, and each chose for him one, and they began to go in unto them and to defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms, enchantments, the cutting of roots. Now, a lot of people, when they read this cutting of roots, they think about grafting of trees. Well, yes, it is this, but it's not just that. It's fractals. We're talking about stem cell technology. We're talking about the grafting of bones. We're talking about medical understandings. And if you go back to uh, the Sumerian tablets, you'll see that they worship the planetaries you'll see this is the symbols of ancient planets and you'll also see that they had all of this knowledge um hi how are you you will see that um they were teaching astrology they were teaching war they were teaching all of the things that these deities or these watchers taught them they were taught mathematics they were taught medicine for example and they are all evolved out of this they were they were taught witchcraft and yes they did use things to conduct energy because witchcraft is literally the science of knowing uh frequency you set a spell with your mouth whether you know what you're doing or not you set a spell with your intentions whether you know what you're doing or not but they had the understanding of this but they got they took it to this and they became pregnant and they bear great giants whose height was 3000 L's. Now L's is also a measurement. Now, all of these ancient words didn't just mean um, one thing. They meant macro and micro, just like Eka does. Eka means um, the periodical chart or the elements. And it also means soul we're one at soul level so it's never just one thing this is the problem with those studying in english they think too literally they think it just means one thing but there is not a single ancient language that just means one thing so um this is what it led to and because they had so many giants, they could no longer sustain them. They couldn't feed them, yeah? They, they ate a lot. And remember that angels don't need to eat, but because they wanted to have a human experience in a body, they created these offspring that could participate in the seven deadly sins. And one of those is gluttony, right? So what happened? They started devouring mankind and they began to sin against birds, beasts, reptiles, and fish and devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Remember, blood is light. Blood is connects directly into soul level. And the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. So the earth, the frequency, the resonance of Mother Earth was crying out against these beings. Now, humans are made out of one element being earth, right? This is our body suit. This is our carbon suit. This is part of our 666 suit. It's our beast suit. But there were so many nations living in peace in their beast suit before this defilement happened. Before the, And when we're talking about sinning, how can you sin against a bird, a beast, a reptile and a fish? Well, they were meddling with the DNA. They were grafting. They were creating abominations. You can still see it now. It's still happening, happening scientifically. They were creating man beasts and embodying those with Nephilim spirits that had passed away. When a Nephilim died, there is nowhere for that spirit to go. A human spirit, if they work through forgiveness and lifting their frequency, they have the ability to ascend, but just like Elijah. So the two, the two ascended ones that met Christ at the top of Mount Hermon one moses passed in death as one way still human having the human experience but asked for forgiveness connected into the most high creator still ascended the, but there was a battle by the 
devil for his body right the body aspect of you is your devil resonance it is your belly it is your bile aspect it is your look at the lab being the laboratory and these scientists know these things but Elijah was taken differently Elijah was taken in a living state Elijah ascended without death perceivably which is why he's one of the last witnesses i want you to track into the story of elijah because remember it was elijah as a prophet that battled against baal priests he's not battling against demons there i'd like to point out just like daniel didn't daniel battled one dragon in the book of bell and the dragon but he was battling against the priests that were deceiving you this historic story is written over and over and over again if you read the missing books in the apocrypha you will see there was never a battle against the demons there was a battle against the humans that had embodied these evil spirits we become eugenically what we meditate on a little bit more from chapter 9 and then Michael, Uriel, Raphael, Gabriel looked down from heaven and saw much blood being shed upon the earth. These four archangels, I believe, hold the four winds. They hold the four corners of earth that's mentioned. Are you keeping up with me here? Oh, Mel, I've got lots of sound healings coming up. Please check on my website. Yeah, I'm in flow state now for some really deep topics. I don't, I just don't want to lose that. I do know there's one on the Northern Beaches on the 20th of September, but there's one sooner um, in Beverly Hills. So check, check out the website. Thank you for being here. Um, these four archangels saw much blood being shed now remember that blood or the crying out of somebody that's murdered the blood cries out the soul cries out the soul cries out it becomes a frequency of terror and fear i mentioned to you the other day that the obelisks are placed on song lines where the song line is and the sacrifice is done there our most modern day way to look at this is for the Australians and New Zealanders watching here, Anzac memorials. These entities love war. They spill blood as satanic ritual or Baal ritual. I'm going to call it Baal now because it's Baal ritual in order to use black magic spells on that song line space. The best thing you can do to shift the energy there is to go to those spots and worship the creator sing bless be joyful do incredible things set the light back there because of duality because of energy because you are a battery we are drawn there in our customs in our cultures to cry to think about the past remember there's no time time also links to saturn to karma to um, matter density the beast state i want to show you this today is just going to be such a big chat um, i hope you're keeping up up with me drop a comment here if i'm chatting too fast please i get so excited about breaking down these things that i need you to just help me to just make it digestible back to chapter nine the earth was made without inhabitant cries the voices of their crying up to the gates of heaven and now to you the holy ones of heaven the souls of men make their suits saying bring our cause before the most high and they said to the lord of the ages the lord of lords the god of gods the king of kings and the god of the ages the throne of thy glory standeth unto all the generations of the ages and thy name holy and glorious and blessed unto all ages thou hast made all things so they're speaking to creator and the power over all things hast thou and all things are naked and open in thy sight and thou seest all things and nothing can hide itself from thee thou seest what azazel has done azazel may link into satan 
we don't really know it's difficult because so much of the history has been changed but Azazel in a nutshell took took the blame and was bound and placed into the underworld placed holding the gates placed into the earth yes there is an inner earth the spirit of the most high has taken me there and shown me abominations i couldn't handle the energy and as i was told as i landed back in my body i was being carried actually by an angel holding my rib cage not sure how it works not sure whether you're in the body or out of the body just like it's written in revelation but what father showed me was that i was only shown a fingernail of the density of the black magic darkness and i couldn't handle it so things are much worse than you'll ever know but as the veil is lifted the revelations happening we are realizing that these things have been happening ever since babylon was ruling now babylon the tower of babel was built at the top of the tower to sacrifice children to spill blood to manipulate magical energy anyone that practices dark art occultic magic knows that blood is a powerful thing to use for black magic energy so they were holding the high place with the sacrifice of the innocents nothing's changed there's nothing new under the sun as solomon has written it's all happened solomon did the same hence solomon having a book on demonology so too king james had a book of demonology now i want to get into some of the eugenics now so if you haven't heard the term eugenics and i'm going to blanket that into mkr programming how are we being programmed uh, supernaturally how are we being programmed subconsciously how is our super consciousness being manipulated well it's using visuals and sounds these are waves that vibrate higher than matter density eugenics is this it is a set of beliefs and practices that aim to improve the genetic quality of a human population that's what they'll tell you it is but eugenics when used with dark arts mystical knowledge occult knowledge can be used in reverse remember that we are a battery and this is why i believe that um in a lot of the ancient stories a lot of the dark ones built cities because a city disconnects you from the energy of the mother the energy of nature i want you to think about how a city is built it's built with square buildings high-rise buildings busyness conjection lots of electricity the city is built much like the motherboard of a computer and that is not a mistake if you look at the cathedrals they actually show you the conductors on the floor in sacred geometry patterns i'd love you to dive into this stuff it's fascinating so the city is drawing and draining your energy now even on an ionic state we know this to be actual when we live in a city like i do we have to exit the city exit the matrix to plug in to tap back in and clear the positive ions that we've collected in our field and get back to nature get back to peace uh, and gather in some of her negative ions so that we are balanced as the batteries so does everything we then believe remember eugenics is a set of beliefs and practices does everything that we believe affect our eugenics and therefore affect our dna i hazard a guess that it does is saturn still ruling in corinthians 3 18 it says this beholding as in a mirror the glory of god when we behold his glory we will become transformed into the same image that is the likeness of christ so in this particular scripture it's not asking you to look at christ christ is already in you it's to look at the glory of god 
which you will find in nature. Nature has spirits. These elemental spirits witness the growth of us when we tap into them instead of looking at things that men made. Remember, the ancient Jews wanted to make something themselves to worship. Can you not see that the elite want their tall buildings? They want their mechanical things. They want their AI technology in order to have history write down their name and say how amazing they are. There is nothing new under the sun. So just for a moment, I want you to ponder what you are giving your energy today. Is it something from Saturn? from matter, from bitterness? Is it something that's been birthed with the invoking of the energies of Gregorian spirits? Or is it something that the Most High made, which is universal? When is the last time that you looked up at the stars and didn't give homage to the planet, but rather to the creator that made it? When is the last time you went into the ocean and felt the energies clear your auric field and tap back into the energy of love state when you're there? I feel peaceful. I feel joyful. I want for nothing. Everything's been provided for me. I'm not striving after things that I have to buy. Now, the ancient Egyptian god Osiris directly links into Saturn. These gods, these gods are a, uh, a depiction of Saturn. The tricky thing is, is that Osiris then becomes a different name with each bunch of rulers. But know this, that each ruler for each nation has joined and manipulated the DNA through marriage, through interbreeding so that they could keep ruling right down to even the current ones now. I want to show you something that might blow your mind for those of you that didn't know this. England's King Charles II took medication made from human skulls after suffering a seizure. And in 1909, physicians commonly used, commonly used human skulls to treat neurological conditions. For the royal and social elite, eating mummies, eating mummies seemed a royally appropriate medicine as doctors claimed mummia was made from pharaohs. So even if they haven't connected the DNA, with sexual union or interbreeding, they have connected the DNA with cannibalism and necromancy. We become what we eat. Eugenics is a belief system that you can invoke whatever you meditate on, whatever you ingest. They know these things. So interesting, right? and freaking scary. What's Lauren saying? Zoloft has a black box warning and they tried prescribing me that for postpartum stuff. Interesting, it's called black box. This is, thank you so much, Lauren. I'm gonna lead into this black box symbology now for those of you that haven't watched any of my shorter videos on these particular things. So the black box, I'm gonna just repeat now what eugenics is. Eugenics is a set of beliefs and practices that aim to improve the genetic quality of a human population. Eugenics was said to birth straight after the Second World War, but I'm going to challenge that. I feel it's been happening since Egyptian times, maybe earlier. Eugenics um, have altered various human gene frequencies by inhibiting the fertility of people and groups purported to be inferior or promoting those that are purported to be superior. <laughs> Manipulating who can breed and who can't. Now I'm telling you that the elite bloodlines are all related, including those that are ruling in governmental and Masonic 
stances, those that own the wealth, those that own positions of power, those that know this occult black magic stuff. It's black magic. I don't care how you package it. If I am running in manipulation to control another and to be a god to them, I am running in black magic power. Remember, as I was mentioning, for ancient knowledge and for any knowledge within the occult, we cannot just look at one thing. We must look at the macro and the micro. So the motherboard of the city, taking the energy of humanity right down to the chip. Exactly the same patterning. The spiritual awakened soul can see the patterning the patterning shows you the truth osiris in the egyptian myth i don't believe it to be a myth i believe it to be a belief and a teaching that's still happening to this day was said to be murdered and upsurped, mutilated by his own brother, um, Set. Set is another word for Satan. We say the sun sets, yeah? The darkness. All these names are frequencies. All these names were chosen intentionally by those that understood the mechanics, the scientific mechanics of the universe. I want to ask you now, if these gods were angels, if, why did they all have brothers? Why did they eat their children? Or are they more inclined to be the manipulation of these fallen watcher angels into the gene genome pool of humanity and the bloodlines kept it. They see themselves as God, like Caesar did. Caesar professed that he was a God. He demanded to be worshipped. All right, let's dive into a few black cube symbols now. There are so many, too many for me to mention today, but black rock, being one of them. BlackRock is one of two companies that owns everything. We have definitely been greenwashed. I'm not just talking stocks and shares. I'm talking about anything that you buy. We are financing BlackRock. BlackRock is another way of saying cleverly the black cube. Is it not? The rock, the stone being the symbol for carbon. Carbon, the six. We have Black Hats University. Google that. We have something in voting customs called black balling. Google it. We have the Kaaba. The Grand Mosque of Mecca. Now the mosque has a dome. And so they've put a cube there. We have the Teflon, a small black leather cube used by Jews. We have the black book called the Bible. Bel being the ancient deity of Baal and they worship their bellies, Masonics. Remember that the Bible only became the Bible in a black cover after King James diddled with it. King James himself also has a book of demonology. Tell me he doesn't know these things. We have the black and white tiles within Masonics. We have the black goo 
on our Hollywood stars. We have the little black dress that's become so popular as the sexiest thing. We have the carbon, which has as an element, the hexagonal shape, which creates the cube. It's sacred geometry. We have the graphene oxide that was put into most of humanity during the biggest ritual of mind control. Just makes me cry. We have abnormal activation of immune cells when we have too much graphene in us. The FDA confirms that graphene oxide is in the recent shots. Macro and micro, war against your spirit, war against your body. Graphene oxide is low electrical conductivity. Where do we exude our electrical energy from? It's from the heart space. You are an electrical being. You manifest from here. And just like Moses, you can either have a heart of stone and anger, or you can have a heart of sapphire. Very different frequencies. There is one fixed star called Polaris, which shows where true north is. But just like we are a battery, this is Mother Earth's battery. At the base of Polaro Polaris, there is this vortex, I believe, which is why the elite are obsessed with it. Your true north is to go inward and climb up out of unforgiveness and find freedom in that. Climb up out of karma. Ka, meaning spirit. Ma, meaning bitterness. Climb up, the ancients called the ocean Ma, yeah? Demons do not want to be sent to the ocean. The ocean is where they get trapped. They preferred, much prefer to be in body state. Sometimes we're looking for the sporks under the bed when they're actually in the people. They're in the bloodlines. I just want to put some music back on again because it helps me with my flow. So bear with me. Welcome everyone. Today's a really long chat because it's super duper important. I make no apologies for the truths that I'm revealing. All right, we'll just let this get on. Thank you, thank you. I need my frequencies. This is five to eight hertz for deep healing. It is sound that creates light. I want you now to go to a local graveyard and look for the symbology. Look at the dates. Look at the tiles on the graves. Look for the stones. Those that celebrate the state of matter, ignoring the karma because they think that they've manipulated humanity by showing the hand of cards, building their wealth by intermarrying and by harming children, building and claiming their positions of power, selling out to these ancient Nephilim spirits and ignoring the nature spirits and the ascended ones because of their greed. I want you to look at 
the symbols on the graves. You will see strange little hands. You will see, of course, the Masonic compass. Also another symbol for the box. I want you to look at movies now. I want you to look at album covers. I want you to look at things that are flashing up on your phone. I want you to look at universities and their square box hat. Showing you when the hat's placed on that they're ruling you with Saturn. I want you to step out of the culture that's changing the eugenics of humanity. I want you to step out of your identity in anything that's man-made. The doctrines of devils. And realize that you aren't trapped. That when you are forgiven and debt-free, that you have your crown is open. As I was mentioning, everything the fallen watchers gave the women are actually the bride of Christ's destiny. And so I'm speaking now to religious minds that might condemn those that have knowledge of astrology or those that have knowledge of crystals or those that have scientific knowledge of voice activation. We're speaking things like frequencies. It's so quickly labeled as things of the devil because of the book that they're programmed by. But these are the things that Christ indeed came to smash down and set you free from. When he was accused of being breaking the Sabbath, for example, now Sabbath directly links into Saturnalia, Saturn's day. That is what you're meant to rest out of for eternity, not for one day of the week. You're meant to get past the eight. If you think that you need forgiveness or that you, your God is angry and going to punish you, you're going to stay tra trapped in this belief system. But as soon as you step out of this and get back to nature, you know that the creator loves everything that he created, that wisdom is there for you just for the taking and that you are stepping out of time. Another name for Saturn, Kronos. Kronos ate his children. Cannibalism. Why would a God ruling for Saturn eat his own children? And if this is an angel, how can an angel have children? I want you to think about the demons that you're looking for now in the astrology and the nature things. They're actually trapped in pots of stony hearts. They are human beings running with pride. And the scriptures say that pride rules Leviathan. This is the dragon. And yes, it's a mystical dragon. It isn't physical, it's a principality. It is collective energy of human beings made in God's image. That collectively prefer being right. If you're tapping into pride today, you are worshiping your belly. Where does the solar plexus live, your inner sun? Just like I've been mentioning, as within, so without. You have the sun shining for luminous things. And then you have your inner sun. You are the battery. You are a light being. You prefer to go into your ego state and think you're right. When clearly it's written that God's ways are not your ways. But you've been MKR programmed by the eugenics of your culture, your society, by your rulers that you set up on pedestals above you to worship. And worship doesn't mean bow down. It means give your energy to. Give your thought processes to. You've boxed, your, boxed yourself in into this masculine state. You've hardened your heart to listen to anybody else's point of view. The Jews wore it here, right? 
They have blocked the third eye from seeing beyond the Saturn understandings. Looping in the circle, going round and round. Saturn has a ring, right? This ring holds the heart. Thank you. Thank you for being here and for listening. Today's been a really long breakdown. It is black magic spells. It is eugenics. And it's much more ancient than you think. It is war against humanity. And it is the bride's job to battle this in the astral realm. It is what creates the trauma system that develops things like narcissists straight from the womb, the inability to feel compassion, the inability to feel sorry. Every single empath that's developed out of the same type of trauma they battle with the demons trapped within the pot of the narcissist. The negative arc, the narc, the arc of the covenant that's toxic. All symbols of Masonics. The rock, the stone, the don't. Don't do this. My friends, if you have to be told not to do something, you are unplugged from source. If you have to be reminded not to hate somebody or not to kill or not to judge, you're unplugged from source. You cannot hear our good father's nature spirits, his angels, his beautiful guides, his council of light, the ascended ones. You are boxed in, into a club that was birthed out of Masonics. For each religion, I want you to go have a look at the graves, if you can find them. You will find the obelisks that are telling you that it's the same dark arts, the same ancient practices that practice cannibalism, that practice child sacrifice. The manipulation of soul and Mother Earth is crying out now, for she is laden with it. You are disconnected with your soul. You are trapped in the jack in a box. The symbols are everywhere if you look clearly. Narcissists are developed through trauma patterns. Possessed humans that choose entity energy can't go blaming the devils when the devil and you matched it. Evil spelt back to front within the mirror of consciousness or in the mirror of Christed light, you will see that evil spells live. You just chose to miss the mark. You chose to look at it backwards. You chose to lean into your carbon. have black boxes but they're not even black they're orange have you ever asked yourself why recording of information they're telling you graphene oxide injected into the body causes adverse activation of immune cells the FDA confirms that graphene oxide is in the recent sword, miniature, the same technologies. We've been taught that the ancients were stupid. They were so much more 
filled with knowledge than we were, they were taught by archangels themselves. They were taught the secrets of the bride. But these were brides of the fallen ones. I believe this is why the DNA of that particular bloodline is also in the shot. It's so clever. So, so clever. And so how do we jump out of Saturn? How do we jump out of the hexagonal cube? How do we jump out of the square? How do we jump out of the black magical square? Well, you go inward. You you surrender your culture and your belief systems that are holding you in the programming of eugenics. You surrender what you know. You realize and witness that pride keeps you tethered there and that you already have access to the new sun if you pull it in to your solar plexus. Your solar plexus is where your ego lives. It's dying to self. Why Christ died at the base of, of this incredible pinnacle of a mountain this mountain is a symbol of your stone your bodysuit your animal instincts and as Christ came up out of the water remember the three witnesses are water blood and spirit the spirit descended bringing mother wisdom back in again reconnecting and then up to the top of the mountain the consciousness is climbing within the spine because the spine holds the waters of the womb of your ancestors the spine these waters are passed on since day dot we're all related some of us didn't eat mummies but for a lot of us our ancestors did and so because our ancestors made covenants with darkness spells intentions embodying black energies this is what the light workers are shifting come out of her my people the mother of darkness. These elites worship the black sun. It's all shown to you in the symbols. We are light bodies. When we go out into nature, we connect with light codes from the sun. We energize our light body. Why do you think they're spraying it? With barium aluminium, which just happens to spell bar. They don't want you to ascend like Elijah did. They don't want your body structure to change to crystalline. They want to be gatekeepers for the seven systems that are ruled by Leviathan. Yeah, 100% sunflower dreams. We are breaking our family ancestral curses because there is no time Saturn is the god called Kronos. If you're bound by the clock, if you're worrying about your job, if you are only worrying about money with Caesar's imprint on it, you are bound by matter, matter density, carbon. You are a carbon copy. You are a sheep. And the goats are ruling you, the Baphomets. If you have a spare hour or so today, go back and watch this whole video. I've covered a lot of things and lots of people say to me, I need to break it down into seven second videos, but hey, I just like to go with the flow of things. There's a lot here. If not now, when? These empaths must rise up out of the codependence with the system out of the people pleasing, out of the addiction with the dance of the narcissist. Starve the devils. No more access to your house. Know your worth.
plug back into source and if it isn't loving lock the door for now and go inward lift your standards out of your trauma state because entities rule through stony hearts entities have access through a stony hearted person's field the ball shit the black and the white of it oh what a chat today hexagonal sacred geometry because the hexagonal shape creates the carbon copy you're not a carbon copy you were made in an image of the divine if you have taken medicines that have changed things i want you to alchemize it today work with the spirit overcome body higher self is already seated in the heavenlies it is finished your projection is just trapped in time open up your heart state visualize your ribs opening and magnetize the light invoke goodness into this world use the knowledge of these esoteric things to channel it in bring heaven to earth was it not christ that said you were born to do the greater things another interesting thing that i found in my downloads this morning is about the hermon region where mount hermon was the ancient city was called og the city of og or the kingdom of og comprised of basham and hermon i just want you to look at og spelled back to front please the city of og Christ and his disciples had not left the neighborhood of Caesarea. And the mountain must have been one of the slopes of the gigantic slow a uh, snowy Hermon, many say. Exactly where the angels met and made their covenant against humanity. And surely that curse is broken. We're just waking up to that now. The ancient history of Caesarea Philippi is where the early Canaanites, the Jews, worshipped Baal at Banias. And the prisoners were thrown into the gates of hell to determine guilt for a crime. Ferocious waters gushed from a very large spring of this limestone cave. In ancient times the water was fast moving and would have propelled the bodies over the rocks and the death was guaranteed. The waters filled with human or animal corpses must have been a frightening sight and eventually eventually the cult of Baal was replaced with the worship of Greek fertility gods and Caesar. You see it's the same shit repackaged and yet now they're not just holding Hermon they're holding every corner every block that's written in the word as well if you know where to look to the ancient greeks who settled in this area the cave of caesarea philippi was the gate to the underworld where fertility gods dwelt during the winter and returned to the earth each spring these people also believed the cave held the gates to hades 
The location of Caesarea Philippi is significant because the entire region was considered the domain of the Nephilim or their disembodied spirits. Mount Hermon was ground zero for the Genesis 6 transgression, where we're told in 1st Enoch that the fallen Elohim made their pact with human women. There are two lots of creation stories. One by the gods, the Elohim. One by Creator. And so we can see that pre-creation, our indigenous lived in harmony with the nature spirits, with the knowledge of magnetism. They lived in harmony until the Grigori came and taught them secrets, esoteric secrets from the highest realm of heaven to use in an inverted state. But you flip those things on their head and they're good again. Knowledge isn't wisdom. Wisdom is a she. Additionally, Caesarea Philippi is also the location where King Jeroboam constructed his adulterous center of worship. At this time of Christ, the most important god in Caesarea Philippi was Pan, the Greek god of shepherds. Pan's hind quarter legs and horns are like that of a goat, while his upper body was of a man. The meddling of the DNA, the grafting of precious human DNA with animals. The invoking of spirits into a body. The Greeks believed Pan was born in a cave and he is often associated with music and fertility. Each spring the people of Caesarea Philippi engaged in fornications, cult worship, including prostitution and sexual interactions between humans and goats to entice the return of Pan. And when the Romans conquered this territory, Herod the Great gave it to his son Philip, who rebuilt the city and named it after Caesar, with his name inserted to distinguish it from Caesarea Maritima and added a Roman temple. Same grid line, same spot, same energy, different names. During the early years of Roman occupation, the local people continued to focus their worship on Pan and other Greek gods at the shrines and temples. The ruins of the temple still exist today and visitors can see the inscription dedicated to Pan inside the largest niche. In ancient times, statues were placed by the Greeks in these large niches, carved with limestones on the massive cliff. Most prominent were the Temple of Pan and the Temple of the Dancing Goats. We're still being ruled by goats. We're still being ruled by the egregore of Rome. It is eugenics. It is MKR programming. The sacrifices continue to happen until you stand up and consciously say with your mouth not on my watch because reversal has happened the top has become the tail and you have become a watcher of consciousness because a guardian will always protect the children always protect nature over greed and pride and so you have become just like Enoch did Enoch prayed and interceded for the watchers and was elevated to angelic state himself this is the raising of consciousness you get back into guardian state you become an elder you become one that cares. You become one that loves. You become one that forgives. This is what changes things. You step back into your God state. Not one that's trying to manipulate, control and rule in greed. 
that's ruling with beauty, with servant hands, one that's self-sacrificial instead of sacrificing externally. You see it's esoteric, not exoteric. You're stepping out of the black box spell, the black magic web. You're stepping out of the underworld of the resonance within your bellies and you're rising up to see things with new eyes, to see them well. Interceding for the denseness of humanity instead of accusing them. It is Saturn's energy that is the accuser, the karmic state. today with it isn't just about what you think and what you embody it's about how you spend your money so I want you to live simply and not energize black rots black rocks um, fortune do your best I know it's tricky but share things give things away grow some food eat simply don't rely on this same Herman energy that has Caesar's imprint they're all related you'll see it on the papal hats the fish the scales the mermaid energies of their mothers the embodied spirits ruling with esoteric wisdom externally rise and shine Cut out the petrochemicals, cut out the things that are dumbing you down. Turn the black box off, that Saturnalia black box off. Energize yourself with things that are loving. Energize your things that are light filled. You program through the eyes, you program through the ears. These are the gates of the upper temple. You regurgitate what is programmed out of your mouth. That's where you co-create. So if you catch yourself today being prideful or judgmental, forgive yourself and reset. Start again. Fill yourself. Just like Christ did. Go into nature like the Essenes taught and reprogram yourself again get out of the cities for a bit get out of the matrix thank you for spending Sunday morning with me I appreciate you all here and um, let's see if this will upload it's chunked full of things for you to digest and I'd love to hear how you're progressing with all of it it's not scary to know these things it's empowering you're the bride you should have the esoteric knowledge all of it 
everything that was gifted to the women then, these are your birthright. What will you do with those things? Will you war against yourself and humanity or will you war against darkness? Will you graft roots and trees so that you can feed humanity? Or will you bankroll mad scientists that are grafting precious children and changing the DNA of humanity? Will you support systems that do not have your best interest at heart? Systems that are demanding you to bow against everything your good creator has gifted you. Will you step out of the box in the prison state? Will you be the jack in the beanstalk climbing back up to heavenly state? Are you helping cut the tree down? Let's tap in soon. I wish you a beautiful day. I wish you a beautiful life. And don't be too impatient with those still sleeping. There's a divine clock within them. There's a heavenly clock. Sing it back with joy.